Hello and welcome to my channel Pharmacy in Depth where we'll talk about pharmacy related topics in detail. Today we will see a brief history, the mechanism of action and the drugs used in sulfonamide antibiotics. First, let's see what are antibiotics. So antibiotic is a chemical substance that is derived from a microorganism that kills or inhibits the growth of other microorganisms. Antibiotics were known since ancient times where people used natural extract to alleviate a disease but this was truly based on trial and error earlier people used to extract these antibiotics naturally from molds or bacteria as in case of penicillin but now with recent advancement in structural elucidation techniques and industrialization antibiotics are chemically synthesized in the labs but even before the discovery of penicillin in 1928 which was commercially available till 1940s there was a drug arsphenamine or more commonly known as salvarsan which was chemically synthesized by paul elridge it was synthesized in 1907 for the treatment of syphilis and was the first chemically synthesized antimicrobial agent now let's see the story of sulfonamide discovery So there was a boy in Germany who left his studies and joined the German military during World War 1 in 1914. During that time he served through many military hospitals and was surprised to see that the number of deaths happening with infections was more than the number of deaths happening with the bombs. So once when he got back home he decided that he would find a general cure for bacterial infections. So he completed his education and became the director of the Institute of Experimental Pathology at IG Farben. At IG Farben he was working to find a new antibacterial agent and was working on principle laid down by Paul Elridge. It was already known that bacteria takes dry during staining so different dyes were tested for their antibacterial activities. And in year 1932 the very first drug of sulfonamides which was a red dye Prontosil was discovered. This drug Prontosil was effective against Staphylococcus, Streptococcus and E. coli bacteria. The scientist whose story we are telling since the beginning was Gerhard Domek who discovered this Prontosil. But Prontosil was a pro drug that means it gets converted to its active form sulfonylamide inside the body. But this active form was already known so this drug Prontosil was not liable to get a patent. This led to development of second generation sulfonamides. So Domek was continuously working on new sulfa drugs. One day his 6 year old daughter Hildegard got a blood infection from a needle. So he treated with his new sulfa drug and he saw that the infection got cured. But in spite of good results like these, people's acceptance in Germany towards Prontosil and other sulfa drug was very low. Prontosil received a sudden boost in the United States in 1936. When the son of 32nd president Franklin D Roosevelt Jr got a deadly infection of Streptococcus thermophilus and he was cured with this German antibiotic this sparked a sensation in America and from 1935 until 1942 doctors always used prontosil and other sulfa drugs to fight all bacterial infections until penicillin came in the market and for all the remarkable work done by Gerhard Domek for discovery of prontosil and other sulfa drugs He was given Nobel Prize in 1939 in medicine field. Now let's see the classification of different sulfonamides which are used nowadays. We have short acting sulfadiazine, intermediate acting sulfamethoxazole, long acting sulfadoxin and sulfamethoperazine, and special purpose sulfacetamide sodium which is used for eye infection, sulfasalazine which is used for ulcerative colitis and rheumatoid arthritis, silver sulfadiazine which is used in burns, and mefenide which is also used in burns. Now let's see what is the mechanism of action of sulfonamides. So this is a pathway of tetrahydrofolic acid synthesis which is used in DNA, RNA and proteins. So bacteria synthesize their own folic acid from para amino benzoic acid which is present as a constituent in the media on which the bacteria is growing. Sulfonamide acts as a structural analog to PABA and inhibits the synthesis of dihydrofolic acid. There is another antibacterial agent trimethoprim which blocks dihydrofolate reductase enzyme and stops the synthesis of tetrahydrofolic acid. Sulfonamide when used alone it acts as a bacteriostatic agent but when used in combination with trimethoprim it acts as a bacterial saddle agent. So these both have synergistic effect and that is why a very famous combination of these two drugs cotrimoxazole is available in the market. It is a fixed dose combination of sulfomethoxazole and trimethoprim in a ratio of 5:1. 
Sulfonamides are very commonly used antibiotics, but there are certain side effects associated with it. The first one is Steven Johnson syndrome, which is a hypersensitivity skin reaction. Then there is urticaria, which is uric acid precipitation in urine, leukopenia, folic acid deficiency, and aplastic anemia, which is also due to folic acid deficiency. The reason of folic acid deficiency is because sulfonamide acts on folic acid synthesis pathway, as we have seen just now. In bacteria, they synthesize their own dihydrofolic acid, whereas humans take it from food. So in human, only one reaction is carried out, that is from dihydrofolic acid to tetrahydrofolic acid. And the drug trimethoprim has some sensitivity towards human dihydrofolate reductase enzyme also, which leads to reduction in folic acid in human. So guys, this was all about sulfonamides, a brief discovery of sulfonamides, different classifications, mechanism of action, and adverse effects related to sulfonamides. Thanks for watching the video, I really hope you liked it and if you did, like it, share it and subscribe to my channel.